Now here's the thing. This verse from the Quran is known to be associated with the attack on a Jewish tribe called the Bani Khorasia. Okay? So some you slew, all, all, all adult men, meaning any male with pubic hair, some you made prisoners of, the women and the children. Is this not what ISIS is doing today? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are they quoting this? So what they did was they beheaded every male, mm -hmm. yeah. sold the women and children into slavery. So we know that what this is associated with. And the final verse, and I think, yeah. Let not the believers think they can get the better of the godly. They will never frustrate them. Here it is. I want you to look at this. Against them make ready your strength to the utmost of your power, including steeds of war to strike terror in the hearts of the enemies of Allah and, I'm sorry, and your enemies and others besides who you do not know but whom Allah doth know. Uh, the U.S. 82nd Airborne has a saying, kill them all, let God sort them out. And I'm told it goes back to a medieval phrase. But the point is, doesn't this look like kill them all, let God sort them out? Oh, Islam doesn't stand for that. Okay. Now, I want you to remember, against them make ready, because this quote starts with 856. This is, this is where 860 begins. And to be truthful, I cut off part of it because I just wanted to fit it in here. So, the Quranic concept of war over a three-page period gives four quotes from the Quran to say what the Quranic concept of war is. <clears throat> that the Pakistani military and the Pakistani Attorney General, Advocate General really, said is good. They called it a restatement of the law. Okay? The Indians pull this out of the pockets of people they fight in Kashmir. So, these are the four quotes that represent the Quranic concept of war. What is the Quranic concept of war? Cast terror into the, Cast terror of the, the hearts of the unbelievers. <laughs> now, I'm not asking anybody to believe me. In fact, you know, this is page 56 to 58, so it's really a two-page period where this is done. I'm not asking you to believe I even wrote this right. You can get this book. It was written in English. Like everything they do is written in English. Okay? And you can read it. Because one of the things I do is I don't take the most extreme interpretation of anything because I never have to do that. So we already know that the Pakistanis have been on this position since that book was written in 1978. So he goes on and he says, terror struck into the hearts of the enemies is not only a means, it is an end in itself. Once a condition of terror into the opponent's heart is obtained, hardly anything is left to be achieved. It is the point where the means and end meet and merge. Terror is not a means of imposing decision upon the enemy. It is the decision we wish to impose upon him. We don't only want to use terror to defeat you. We want you in a permanent state of terror. Okay? This was not written by Al-Qaeda, remember. So let's take a look at a couple things here. This page right here. Try to get out of your way here. Terror cannot be struck in the hearts of an army by merely cutting its lines of communication or depriving of its rights to withdraw. It is basically related to the strength or weakness of the human soul. The goal is to destroy faith. Faith in your God, faith in your world, faith in your leadership. Do you think most people who understood what was going on at the OSCE yesterday would lose faith in their leaders if they got an eye of it? They understood what was happening? It's a delegitimization campaign if you want to use the language of insurgency. Psychological dislocation is temporary. Spiritual dislocation is permanent. To instill terror in the hearts of the enemy it is essential in the ultimate analysis to dislocate his faith. An invisible faith is immune to terror. A, a weak faith offers inroads to terror. So, this is... This is what is euphemistically called spiritual warfare. At the top, the number one form of warfare, the, the one doctrinal basis of, of Islamic concept of jihad is spiritual warfare, to get you to be spiritually void. It makes sense that they would align with a, a political movement that would reduce everything you think to, to be meaningless. Does that not make sense? If you watch what the Brotherhood does with these groups, they never participate in their... In the, in the things that the left is doing, but they always push them to do it as allies. 
because they want the left to reduce society to meaninglessness and hopelessness. Does it, what does anything mean? Okay? They come in and they establish order. So, you know, people forget this. You know, back in the 80s, Yasva Bonagodi Peruski, I was a Russian language qualified person and had a job in the government where I had to know Russian. Okay? And people forget this. When Lenin came in, okay, he had free love, he had open societies, easy divorce, people were naming their children Dinamo and stuff like that, an electric plant. When Stalin came around, people were so ice, you know, frozen because there was no order. What he did was he brought order. I will give you order, but you will follow me. And you know what the people said? Yes. But what did what did Lenin and the revolution do? It destroyed the old order. Okay? You know, Hitler's kind of interesting because he took over with the brown shirts. They were kind of like Lenin. Okay? When I say genius, I don't mean this in any positive sense. I just mean that the man thought this through. He then had the Night of the Long Knives, where he brought in the establishment people, the black shirts, to actually run everything. He actually had his own revolution. He had his revolution, his counter-revolution. I mean, that's, yeah, you think, think about that. So what you, what you should think of is the Brotherhood and these, the OIC sees the left as the revolution, and they want to be the counter-revolution that says, you want order, you want your daughter not to be pornified on the internet like you were when you were 18 years old and told that's normal. Mm -hmm. You want to you wanna have, have your daughter go to a bathroom and not have to worry about a transgender person being there. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, we'll give you that. We'll kill them. But you will follow us. And when that time comes, this is, this, what you see today is all about destroying the, the, the current order. To establish a new order mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and, and co-opting the current leaders who are supposed to be something else into this because they're afraid to say no and that's when they come in and they'll say make sense yeah. this this Absolutely. is the this is the grand you know, what, what's hard is you know what was really hard for me is I could do this I could say what's going on in Europe oh sir boom 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 what's going on boom 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 what's going on in America you never look at it in your own country because you never expect it to happen in your own country. Yeah. And I said, I was like, let me play a game. Let me analyze what's going on here like what's going on over there. Because I was like really good at what I did. When you have an enemy who understands that your population is spiritually vacant, and they're going to they're gonna get your people to crush that for, for them, okay, they know what people will want. And the left will not be able to deliver on that. So... Oh, I forgot to read this. Whenever, what, whenever the form or type of strategy directly against the enemy, it must, in order to be effective, be capable of striking terror in the hearts of the enemy. This rule is fully applicable to nuclear as well as conventional war. So I want to make it clear, this is not an Al-Qaeda document. This is a Pakistani document. A nuclear power is already on record as saying they can justify nuclear weapons in a, in a jihad. Whoa. That's true as a matter of fact. If you disagree, you're wrong. 